Um, then you can go back to the locker room. I know, gross. It's weird that they did that. Anyway, let's have a goose. Mm hmm. Let's just give it a try. I took out my handbook and ran across the carrier, and then. No luck. Maybe only though, because only can open it. Wait, but what about the emergency handbook I found in the headmaster's hidden room? Okay, let's give it one more try. I took the emergency handbook and ran that across the card reader and... Beep. Alright, just what I was hoping for. Now let's see what we've got inside. This locker is totally disorganised. Whoever it belongs to has organisation problems in every part of their life. This is a crystal ball. Huh? A crystal ball? No, it can't be. There's no way he ever used this locker, it's just not possible. Is this a deck of playing cards? No, they're tarot cards, but wait, aren't those used to turn fortunes? It's just a coincidence, right? It's all kinds of textbooks and notebooks started in, up in no particular order, and dust everywhere. I have to assume whoever stuff this is didn't do a lot of studying. Not that I can really talk. I'm trying to act as casual and natural as possible, I picked up one of the notebooks I saw. Because but at the so moment I looked inside the, the notebook, any sense of easiness I may have had evaporated. What? There was no denying what I saw. Inside the notebook was written Yasuhiro Hagakure. Is this our Yasuhiro? The notebook also contains a large number of notes for a, de a, for a de blah, 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 blah. Excuse me, cannot speak for a variety of different classes. Which would mean he attended classes here? That can't be possible. I mean, here I came to the school at the same time as the rest of us. And we were all sucked into this evil world. We never had the chance to take any classes. So what is this notebook? Okay guys, so I'm going to have a quick break of about 15 minutes. I'm going to quickly have some noms and I'll be back. And we will definitely finish this tonight. If it takes me the rest of the night, I will finish this game. But I'm going to quickly have something to eat. Um, so be about 15 minutes so we can just chat in the comments and see what you guys think. How you think it's going to end. Uh, I'll just have him against the hero's mastermind, I guess that. Uh, if he's the mastermind, I will eat Fluffy. So, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Fluffy, you're fine. She doesn't care, she's asleep. Anyway, so I won't be long, so it'll be about 15 minutes just to get a little bite to eat. And, um, yeah, I'll still talk to you guys in the comments, but I'm sure, I'm sure you don't want me to hear me munching in between gameplay, so, yeah. I'll be back in about 15. So yeah, I will still check to you in the comments and please don't hear her, she's not the norms. She's the emergency food supply. <laughs> if all else fails, you're going in the pie, Fluffy. Anyway. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys soon. Hello. Alright guys, so welcome back. We're going to solve this mystery and kick Monokuma's ass. Let's go. Let's get investigating. Hope you guys are okay. Thank you for being so patient. Appreciate it. But we haven't eaten much today because it's just been a busy day. So we just we had leftover leftovers from yesterday, and we just heated them up. So uh, I don't know if there might be a clue. Okay, let's try these lockers then. This thing is practically empty. Um, we got Japanese food yesterday, so we, I had we had ramen and gyoza left because I had um, the car yesterday. So yeah, it was nice. It was really good. So there's just one thing, some kind of pocketbook. I don't see a name written on it, so I can't say for sure whose who's it is. But there's some writing inside. It could be important. I don't like violating the owner's privacy, but I'd better take a look. Gyoza! Gyoza! I can't say gyoza properly now because every time I say gyoza, 
I think of Doro Hidoro and the character in that says girls are like girls and I love it. I say it every single time. I'm surprised um, Edward's not like crazy for me saying it. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Looks like a girl's handwriting. And all the letters are spaced out evenly like whoever wrote them was measuring them. Whoever wrote this must have been really meticulous. Huh? I was looking through the pocket book, but my hand froze when I got to a certain page. I saw something familiar written there, words I'd heard before. There's a plan to turn Hope's Peak into a shelter and isolate the students here in a communal life. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens to be the headmaster and my father. Oh, I better put my glasses on. That would help. He was willing to give me some more details regarding the plan. Here's what he said. The point is to keep our student prodigies safe, to keep them as our hope for the future. Only their genius can overcome disaster and only their hope can overcome despair. For the future of our country, our world, it's not an exact exaggeration to call this our final hope. We must isolate our superior young youth from the corrupted world to serve as the foundation for a new era. This is the only hope we have. I hope that you'll be willing to go along with this plan. I'm actually looking forward to the trial because, my goodness, all the talking! <laughs> so that's what my father had to say to me. As usual, he made a selfish decision. A selfish decision without consulting anyone else. I can't imagine a worse father. This can't be true, can it? But I knew it was and I knew exactly who the pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko, it couldn't be anyone else. But if this belongs to Kyoko, what's it doing in this locker? And what she wrote here completely contradicts what she already told me. She said she hasn't seen her dad since he left when she was little. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just has to be the, the headmaster and my father. What does this all mean? I quickly scanned the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something that would prove me wrong about this whole thing. When I reached the last page, the question marks spinning through my mind just started spinning that much faster. When I looked at it, unlike the rest of the pocketbook, the writing here was messy, disorganised, scrawled. What is this? What does it mean? I have no idea. How could this possibly make any sense? But the more I see, the less sense it makes. Because these lockers, I mean, they had to belong to the previous students, right? So why am I seeing this? Why are the things in the lockers that look like they belong to people here? A notebook that seems like it belongs to Hiro. And a pocketbook that seems like it belongs to Kyoko. There has to be some kind of explanation. But if I want to find that out, I have to keep moving the investigation forward, and I have to believe in everyone. Okay. Nope, don't see anything that could be a clue. Right, okay. Uh huh. Nope. So let's try these ones. Nope. Right, I think they're all done. Hmm. Uh oh. Um, this is a school announcement. Uh huh. Is everyone working hard? Is your investigation coming along nicely? Well yep. then, since you're all giving it your best, your generous headmaster will give you a little hint. <laughs> For those of you who are interested, please make your way to the gym ASA possible. What now wants to give us a hint? It's suspicious, there's no doubt about that. This could be a trap. Even knowing that. He says to go to the gym, right? Oh, hey, hero. Ah, uh, Makoto? Why Jack's so surprised? Uh, um. Oh, no reason. Uh, 
which can remember she did have memories taken from her. She did. And but yeah, we do have to suspect everyone though. You heard Monica's announcement, right? Are you here to find out what he has to say? <sighs> I I I just did actually, I'm on my way out. You already talked to him? What do you say? Listen, sorry, but I I gotta go. Hero, wait. There was no point in trying to stop him, he ran off like a frightened animal. Hero, it was like he was trying to avoid me. I was hoping to talk to him about the notebook I found in the locker. Has he been hiding something this whole time? He is sus. Hello, welcome, welcome, hello. Are you ready for your final hint? Well, it just so happens to be in the envelope on the ground in front of you. The envelope? This must be the envelope. And just so you know, I won't be answering any questions about what you find inside. What? Don't worry, just get on with it. Monokuma's cryptic words didn't make me feel any better, but I picked up the envelope and opened it. What I found was a single photograph. Sorry guys, I was just looking at the photo. It featured a bunch of faces I recognised extremely well. It was everyone who'd come to Hope's Peak at the same time as me. Wait, but... There's someone behind Sayaka. She's the only one I don't recognise. Wait, that's not true, I do recognise her. That's right, when Byaki and I were in the headmaster's room, we looked at that file. Mukuro Ikusaba? Then this girl is... What? Why? Why is Mukuro here with everyone else? Hmm, Makoto isn't there, you're right. And even more than that, just having here, just having everyone post here like this is weird enough by itself. And we're all watching, wearing matching uniforms, I don't remember anything like this. And now that I'm looking at it, it's not even everyone. I'm not in the picture. I'm, not the, I'm the only one not there. The picture has all 15 other students, but not me. Weird. Oh dear. It's strange. Sorry, my eyes are like playing up today. They're really itchy. Goodness gracious me. Behave yourself, eyes, please. I need to see. Oh god. I guess that makes sense. <laughs> After all, I don't remember even t ever taking a picture like this. I went to junior high with Sayaka, but the first time I met everyone else... was when I arrived here at Hope Speak Academy. So it's natural for me not to be in this picture, but... What's well, definitely unnatural... is that everyone else is in, this, in the picture. I thought everyone was like me and didn't know each other till they got here. But if this picture is real, then could that mean? They did. Could it be? Everyone else and just me? Everyone here except me is... How long are you going to keep up this rambling solilo soliloquy? I don't know. Of yours, Hamlet. What are you gonna do? You're getting, you're kind of getting in the way, standing there, you know. Hmm. So I mean, get out. But but, I told you, I'm not fielding any questions. Unbeal. What kind of mystery would this be if I gave you all the answers? That'd be totally out of left field. Oh, don't call me out. <laughs> oh, he's he's off one again. I guess that means he's done talking. Damn it. Hamlet. <laughs> So in the end, all I found in the gym was even more confusion. And with that confusion in hand, I left the gym dejected. 
Mm. How does that count as a hint? It just made me even more confused. Is that what Monokuma was going for? Did he put together a fake photo just to confuse me? But it looks so real, so full of life. How could anyone fake that? Which would mean everyone but me. Maybe you should just ask everyone directly. That should clear all this up. No, I have to clear all this up. Okay. Let's see what we can find, I guess. Why all avoid me? Well, why did he avoid me? I mean, Photoshop <laughs> could be. Don't anyone get a straight answer. Nothing new there then. Oh, Biakia. Listen, do you think we could talk? Biakia? I have nothing to talk to you about. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. Hey, Biakia, wait. Well, of course you didn't. You just walked away. What the? Why is he acting like that? Like he's purposely trying to avoid me. Damn, do we smell or something? Now, where's Token? What's the face? <laughs> God knows. I think everyone's given the same photo, but they were removed. Could be. I decided to visit the bio lab one more time. And the first time I saw when I got there was her passed out again. Huh? Toko? What the heck? It's open, open oh, Toko. Oh. Toko, are you okay? No, no, she's not dead, is she? Oh. It's cold, it's super cold, it's so cold I think I might catch cold. If you keep taking naps in places like this, I'm sure you will. What? I was asleep? Ah, I must have fainted again. I bet you were standing there staring at me getting all excited, weren't you? Uh, uh, no! That is... Uh, what? Yeah, I can't, I can't even. No, I wasn't. Oh, then what? Hot and bothered? Straight up horny? Oh, 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 oh! Oh, oh, dang! Um... Uh, I feel uncomfortable. Um, okay, so why did you pass out? Okay then. I don't know, last thing I remember was me waking up just now. What did you, what did you do to Miss Morose? Oh, that's right, your memory stops and starts each time you switch. Bingo bazinga, we share some basic knowledge, but our memories are very much separate. She really does. And don't say it like it's a bad thing. It's, just, it's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. Because even if she forgets something, I totally remember. So it's like double the memory. Uh, no, it's more like half. Well, all I want to know right now is where's my little darling? Tell me now or I'll slit your throat. I don't know. I'm sure Bjarki's around somewhere doing his own investigating. Ooh, yes. By himself? I assume so. <laughs> I knew it, I totally knew it. I'm a total pro when it comes to all things master. Anyway, I gotta hurry. I can't even imagine how lonely he, mis he must be right now. Mmm, I don't know about that. Okay then. Toko shot off her eerie laughter echoing behind her. Ah, I totally forgot to ask her about the picture. Well, there's no point in asking Genesis Jack anyway. Besides, I have more important things to do right now. Why did Toko faint? There's gotta be some reason for it. Maybe the body sticking out? Good lord. The fridge is open. But I'm sure they were all shut tight last last time I was here. That must be why she passed out. Right. She faints so easily. Kyoko! Makoto. It's getting late, isn't it? Are you okay? Indeed. I'm sorry if I made you worry. No, you don't have to apologise. But listen about this room. Oh yeah, it's it's a morgue. Yeah. I knew it. I suspected as much. 
and Tucker must have looked inside the fridge, seen what was in there, and well, there you have it. You knew she'd fainted? Indeed. I was on my way here when Genocide Jack came running past me. I assumed she must have sneezed, but once I got inside, the real reason became clear. I imagine she came here to investigate, and when she opened the slot there, that's when she saw the body inside and dropped like a bag of rocks. Why is everything so difficult with her? Anyway. Anyway, we should close it up. Don't want to leave it hanging open like that. Yeah, good idea. Lakota. Give me a hand with this. Kyoko approached the fridge, hands outstretched. But suddenly she stopped. What's wrong? Listen. Maybe we should wait a second before closing it. Huh? How come? Because Mukuro's body is in here. Mukuro's corpse? Mukuro's body is inside the fridge? Let's see. Just like every other tin, the mastermind probably brought it up here while we were in the class trial. The mastermind did it? Because they seem to be able to do the class trial over again, so... I guess. You may be right. Either way, now I can finally get a good look at the body. Oh, that's right, Kyoko didn't get a chance to check the body during the last investigation. Dakota. I need to do my own examination of the corpse as soon as possible. I'm going to find a clue this time, and I'm going to grab the mastermind by the tail. Okay, so what should I do? So then. Why don't you just wait over there? I'll let you know as soon as I'm finished. Just wait over there, that's it. I've already looked through this instruction manual, most importantly. I can't do it, I can't look inside. You went, Makoto. I should ask Kyoko about that group photo. After all, she's in it too. Don't let me interrupt your investigation, but I wanted to talk I wanted to talk to you about something. What is it? It's about that announcement Monica made earlier. Yeah. You mean the one about a hint or something? I didn't take him up on the offer. Huh? Why not? Because The only reason he'd give us a hint at this point would be to confuse us. To cloud our judgement. I can solve this mystery on my own with, without whatever hints he may have to offer. That's a good point. I wish I could go back and do the same thing, but what's done is done, I guess. Standing here looking at her, I don't think she's hiding anything from me. Is she right? Did the mastermind force that picture as a trap to confuse us? That's gotta be it, there's no other explanation. Ah, uh, okay. We've seen this part, so what do we just leave? Well, what else do we do? I don't know, two seconds. And also the, the, these ones are. It was seen the blue light comes on when a slot is occupied. So when someone's in there, the blue light comes on. Looking around the number of lights that are on, including Macros, there's nine in all. Nine. Nine lights? Do the same thing again. No, I just. Ah! Uh, oh my God! It's stuck. It's stuck. It died. It died. The controller died. Pro streamer. Two seconds, guys. We just need the wire. There we go. Oh, good. Here we go. Okie dokie. There we go. Smart. Okay, I don't want you to look at this, but there we go. You know, I think I've seen a top like this somewhere before. Yes, you've seen it in the shed. Ah, it's the same one as I found in the garden tool shed. And if I remember that tarp, I had a stamp on it that said Biolab. And that's the tarp that was used to help camouflage the murder in the garden. At some point, someone got it from the Biolab and took it over there. Okay. <sighs> Okay, Makoto, I'm done. Already? Jeez, that was fast. Indeed. Anyone could do good work if they go slow, and that's in that spirit I'll make my report brief. 
Because no offense, I want to get to the class trial, so I don't have to. Sp I don't have to read it all out. Yay! <laughs> I'm extremely lazy. <laughs> so, did you find anything? Indeed. I paid careful attention to the wounds and the traces of blood, and it seems highly likely that the stomach wound and blow to the back of the head were inflicted after death. Oh, really? The burnt tissue made things a little difficult, but I'm completely confident in my feelings. My, my findings, sorry. So that means neither of those were the fatal injury, right? Then what was the fatal injury? Due to the explosion, that I vic the victim's identity is unknown. They are however dead before the blast. The victim had been stabbed a single time with a knife which went completely through the body. They had also been struck in the head with an object about as thick as a metal pipe. The body was covered with other wounds, but these were at least several days old. The only other option is those other wounds, but the files said they were old. Is that right? Where does it say they're old? Because huh? All the Monokuma files says is that they were inflicted at least several days ago. I guess I don't see the difference. Well, the difference is immense, considering the impression they give. You seem to be equating several days old with simply old. However, but that doesn't quite follow logically. Old wounds, it makes it sound like they've been there forever, like they're not related to the murder. Are you saying that are? That they are? We all got the Monokuma file right after she was killed, right? So if the wounds were at least a few days old, there's no way they could have had anything to do with so it. Then. What if Mukuro herself wasn't killed within the last few days? What? At the very least. Certainly you can allow it as one of the many possibilities, can't you? One of many? Right. A detective doesn't have supernatural powers. There's no way to predict the answer from the beginning. Instead, the ideal detective begins by imagining as many possible scenarios as they can. In other words. They envision these possibilities without prejudice, without bias, using only their logic and common sense. Then as they investigate, they test what they find against each of these possibilities. Of course, me telling you this doesn't mean you'll be any good at detective work. But beyond using that to solve this particular, mis particular mystery, you should keep in mind for the future. Hey. So if there's anything else you'd like to know about the condition of the body, now's the time. Come to think of it, there was one thing. Earlier when I was looking at Mukuro's profile, it listed her height and weight. So... 5 foot 7 inches and 87 pounds. Vitals were 31, 22, 32. Did I get all that right? You remembered all that? They are indeed consistent with the corpse. So then... Indeed. And don't forget about the Fenrir tattoo, there's absolutely no mistake. Indeed. Our victim in this case is without a doubt Mukuro Ikusaba. Okay. And? Is that all you wanted to ask? Yeah, I think so. so then. then it looks like we have no further business from Mukuro's body. Let's get going, it's kind of chilly in here. Oh wait, we're not going to put the body back? Do you think it's kind of sad leaving it out like this? Why? Sad? Did you forget she was our enemy once? A part of the ultimate despair. But she still got killed, she's still a victim. Hey. Have you ever heard the phrase, you reap what you sow? Well yeah, but still. <sighs> you really are naive, you know that? It's really quite appalling. But she could have abandoned me, but she decided to help me instead. So for someone like that, what does it mean to be, na be naive? Yeah. So then. She in. I think we've done all we can do, can do here. Back to our separate investigations, yes? Ah, hold on. I still have one more thing to do. Something I need to talk to Kyoko about. I need to ask her about the pocketbook that I found in the locker. If I don't do it now. Yeah, we might as well. Hey Kyoko, I did have one last thing. I know I shouldn't, but I feel like I have to ask. What? Go ahead then, out with it. Have you really not seen your dad even once since you got here? What? So. What do you mean? Well, you know all those lockers on the second floor of the Indeed. dorms. I do, yes. Let's get into any of those lockers. You need the handbook of whoever the locker belongs to. Actually, I managed to get them open using that emergency handbook. I see. The one you found in the headmaster's hidden room. And? So, did you find anything worthwhile in the lockers? I found a pocketbook and after looking through it, I think it must be your pocketbook. Why is that? What makes you say that? Because... Like I said, only the locker's owner should be able to get into it, right? I can't imagine those lockers belong to any of us. After all, we only got access to that area just recently. What I'm saying is, there's no way I could have had access to any of those lockers. And if I did have a pocketbook, why would I bother putting it in the locker? Everything you just said makes perfect sense, but there's something written inside. It was about the headmaster, I bet your father. What? If that's true. Could that mean the video is that video is real too? Video? Makoto. Makoto, I think everything is finally starting to fit together to reveal a cohesive picture. 
Although I'm afraid that picture might be worse than anything we could have imagined. But what are you talking about? I need to go investigate these, those lockers right now. I need to confirm what you just said with my own two eyes. Oh, let me give you the headmaster's handbook. That way you can. So... That won't be necessary. If I'm right about this, I shouldn't have any problem opening the locker with my own handbook. After all, it would seem that it's my locker. Your locker? Dakota. If you watch this, it'll all make sense. A DVD? And it says Class 78 Urgent so... Interviews? I found it in that hidden room after you left. Anyway. I don't have time to explain what I think it means, so just watch it and see for yourself. I think you'll realise exactly what it means. You'll understand why you found my pocketbook in a place none of us have ever seen before. None of this makes sense right now, but I guess that means there's some important clue in this DVD. Oh good lord, I need a drink. Makoto. Ooh. Oh, and now it's my turn. Do you have a second to listen to me ramble? Ramble? In other words. So as it turns out, the arrangements I made, I'd made didn't stick. What I mean is I'm less and less sure of everything, even my own feelings. You're talking about your dad, right? I can never find the answers to the questions I wanted to ask for the rest of my life. And all because of the mastermind. However, But there's one thing I am sure of. When it comes to the mastermind, there's no room in my heart for forgiveness. I... I swore to destroy the ma destroy the mastermind. That is just one more reason to follow through on that. Kyoko's eyes burned with the fire of determination. The determination to defeat the mastermind. It's strange to be confronted with his death and suddenly feel this way. I couldn't care less if my father had found happiness. Why? So why is it? Why does it bother me so much to know how he suffered? It's ridiculous. It's just not understanding it, I guess. She let out a small laugh as she said it, but her smile was filled with sorrow. <sighs> So that's it for my rambling. There's still much to do before I can consider my task complete. Oh, hey, Gua. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, you're right. Hey. But keep this in mind. There's only one. There's only ever one absolute truth. Whether the truth is justice or suffering. Whether it's the greatest truth or the worst. What do you mean? Makoto. Even if the truth you uncover is filled with hopelessness, you still can't give up hope. Absolutely not, because because all I can do is keep moving forward. That's pretty much all I'm good at, you know? <laughs> Indeed. Sorry if that was strange. So then. Anyway, I need to get going. I'll see you at the class trial. Leaving behind that final farewell, Kyoko is gone. I'd better get going myself. I got the DVD from Kyoko. I should head to the EV room to check it out. Kyoko said something about hopeless truth. But no matter what happens, I won't lose hope. Even if it's the worst truth in the world. I can't afford to lose. Right, so we've got a mystery DVD here. Uh, so... I guess we'd better go check it out and see what it's all about. Uh, is it on the second floor? No. Red floor. Oh, here we go. Um. You lost. Well, here it is. Right, I'm gonna be two seconds, guys. I'm cutting up into the loo, so I'll BRB. All right, I'm back. So, time to check out that DVD then, and see what's going on. Alright. This should be able to play DVDs just fine. Well then, I better take a look. I took the DVD Kyoko gave me and put it in the player. I said that it was playing but nothing appeared on the screen. I stared into the black of the, mo the, black of the monitor. It must have only been a few seconds. But to me it felt like an eternity. And then all of a sudden, an image appeared. Sayaka? It took me by total surprise. I was in Sayaka in who knows how long, and there she was. Okay, Are you ready to begin? The voice I heard was the, was one. The voice I heard was of the man positioned on one side of the screen. 
It was the voice of a middle-aged man. I apologize, but I hope you don't mind if I record our conversation. I'm a little slow, you know. I never really got the hang of taking notes while having a conversation. It sounded like he was trying to make a joke, but Sayaka's tense face didn't move a single millimeter. So this video is meant to serve as a kind of contract substitute. It's not that I don't trust you guys. It's more like insurance. So please don't worry too much. Now then, let me get straight to the point. There is a chance that you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Um... You want me to accept that? Sayaka was obviously at a total loss. It made total sense. Who would agree to spend spending the rest of your life in the school? I accept. What? Thank you. And I'm sorry about all this. Well, I can promise you that I will do everything in my power to keep you safe. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, I give you my word. As if on cue, that's where the video cut out. There was a lot I hadn't understood up till now, but this, only this. I simply couldn't comprehend what I'd heard, because I know how much Sayaka wanted to get out of here. I know how much she wanted to escape and pursue her dreams of her friends again. She wanted that so bad she tried to free me from murder. So why? Why would she say yes to living here for the rest of her life? As I sat there thinking about it, I noticed a sudden light. On the monitor, the video that I thought was finished flashed back on screen. My eyes, my eyes darted back to the screen. And if I was confused before, what I saw next pushed me right over the edge. Huh? What I saw was me. Impossibly, undeniably me. So, Makoto, before we begin, I should let you know that I'll be recording our conversation. Yes. Me and the headmaster were looking at each other. He and I were having what seemed like a fairly normal conversation. But I... The I in the here and now... had absolutely no memory of it. I had no memory of even meeting the headmaster, much less in then to talk to him like now. this. Shall we get straight to the point? Makoto, there's a chance you may have to spend the rest of your life here in the school. Can you accept that? Yes. This can't be real. I said yes. I'm sorry I'm putting you through all this. Well, I mean, you don't have much of a choice, do you? But I promise that as long as you're in this school, I will do everything I can to protect you. As the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, that's the very least I can do for you. Once again the video cut out. From there the video repeated the same scene again and again with the others. Biakia. Toko. Hina. Everyone, they all said they, they agreed to live in this school forever. And then... Kyoko. Her interview with him had been recorded just as clearly. Without a doubt, she had met him. She sat down with the headmaster of Hope's Peak Academy, her father. And when he asked her this question, she answered the same as everyone else. She accepted a life within the school. Just as Kyoko's interview was wrapping up, the monitor suddenly went blank. Or black, I'm not sure. Huh? It wasn't just the monitor, the DVD played itself. The DVD player itself had apparently turned off. Which of course meant that the, that the DVD wasn't playing anymore. What the heck just happened? Say what? Oopsie, it looks like it's broke, out of service. What, it just happened to break just now? Yeah, bullshit. He probably broke it. Too bad. Now then, when does not matter? Failure can strike anywhere, anytime. <laughs> That's what failure is, right? Failure my ass, you cut the pair on purpose. Of course he did. Well, whatever. Even if I watched the whole thing, it'd just be more of the same. He'd ask them the question, they'd all say yes. I couldn't help myself, I let a huge, exasperated sigh. But as I did, I remembered something. That's right. I fainted too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself, a disconnect. It would seem... Thinking back on it now, at that point, my memory was gone. At that time, I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to the school and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. 
What would make you forget all that? Hey. Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. A convenient outcome. Something that seemed obvious seemed to obviously work in favour of the mastermind. So does that mean I've lost my memory too? What about the others? Have we all forgotten or Okay. Uh oh, here we go. This is the class trial, I think. For anything that has a start, there has to be an end. And if the end comes, then that means it's time for a fresh start. There is no night that doesn't have a dawn. Uh huh. Although that dawn is totally pitch black. There is no storm that won't eventually end. Of course, then that leads to drought. But as I said, every end is <laughs> a me. promise of a new beginning. Which is why I'm sure we'll get to meet again. Because the end is only the beginning. Okay. Anyway, let's get started. Can't wait. The beginning of the end of the class trial. This will be the last one, guys. Everyone gather once again at you know where. <laughs> it's about to begin again. The class trial is going to start. The final class trial. The last time all of our lives will be on the line. The last time hope and despair are on the line. I don't have a choice. I have to do this. Okay then. This is the end. I guess in the first one this time. You're early, Makoto. Listen. Does that mean you feel prepared? Yeah, for now at least. But where's everyone else? Why aren't they here yet? However. Don't worry, I'm sure they'll be here soon. And just like she said. Yakia. Yakia? They arrived one after another, but they were all in the same state of shock. Hina? Hero? Silence. And it wasn't any normal silence, it was the deafening silence of fear and suspicion it was like. The first class trial. You called for me and so I appear. Ah, I'm late. Oh, I'm on fire. Ah, strong style, the master is so wonderful, so cool, so hot, my loins are ablaze. Ew. Yes. Now listen, everything will be just fine if you leave it to me. My beautiful scissors! With my scissors, sharp scissors. With my scissors sharp scissors in hand, I'll stab and gouge and sh shove the master of evil. I thought you can kill your adorable little boys. <laughs> it was what master wants. It can be boy, girl or anything in between. I can handle it. <laughs> uh, where am I? No human language can, can describe the disappointment I'm feeling right now. <laughs> Is everyone here? Ooh, I'm wearing a gloomy Gus faces I see. Okay, well then, let's begin! Trails, chills, kills. This final class trial is going to be slathered in pitch black despair. Claim maximum sorrow! That's fine. You're right, this is the final class trial, and this time it will be fair. What do you mean, this time? Stop with all the slander. I'm a bearing good standing, you know? Unbelievable. If there was a Mr. Fair Guy Universe contest, I'd take home the tiara every year. I'm going to win this game super fair and square. Today, I'm feeling white! And then, and I'll make sure everyone watching at home knows that despair is mightier than the hope. Stop talking. Enough of your tedious drivel. Begin the trial already. <laughs> sure, sure. Let's begin the trial already. I'll be waiting for you down below. Nice. So don't try and run away. <laughs> Laughing as loud as ever, Monokuma disappeared. <laughs> Whatever. In the name of my family. This will be over in no time. With an inexplicable confidence, Byakuya was the first into the elevator. One by one, the others followed. 
<laughs> Nobody made eye contact. Nobody said a word. They just disappeared into the elevator. Hey. They're all acting odd. Like they're paranoid, suspicious of each other. However. But you know why that is, don't you? Yeah, I think so. However. Well, you can tell us all about it soon. At the class trial. You're right, I'm ready. So... Ready to win, right? Of course. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that. We can do it, guys. We can beat him. And then Kyoko was aboard the elevator. I still have to make my way toward the opening, step after step, toward that gaping maw. I've resolved that this would be the last time. I repeated to myself that there was no fear, no mystery left. I pushed the anxiety down, calmed my trembling body, and finally, on steady legs, I passed the threshold and stood in the elevator. Without warning, it began to descend. Deeper and deeper. Deeper, deeper, deeper still. Deeper and deeper, deeper and deeper, deeper, deeper and deeper. Wow. How many times you can see that five times fast? <laughs> deeper and deeper fell. Okay, we get it, Makoto! <laughs> it's deep, okay, I've got it. Deeper than any brain cells he seems to have. Anyway, I closed my eyes and sight fell away. Why do I have a feeling they've all been turned on Makoto? Well, maybe. That sounds about right.